Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Retina Roundup. I, Dr. Meru Augustin, fellow in vitreo retina and ocular oncology, am bringing to you this month's top five articles. Let's start with the first article, which evaluated the safety and efficacy of repeat injections of brimonidine drug delivery system generation two, containing 400 micrograms of brimonidine in patients with geographical atrophy, secondary to age-related macular degeneration. It was a phase to be randomized multi-centered sham controlled study, which included patients diagnosed with geographic atrophy, secondary to AMD, and multifocal lesions with total area of more than 1.25 mm square and less than or equal to 18 mm square in the study eye. The primary efficacy endpoint was geographic atrophy lesion area changed from baseline in the study eye, assessed with fundus autofluorescence imaging at month 24. T-squares mean geographic atrophy area change from baseline at month 24 was 3.24 mm square with brimonidine group versus 3.48 mm square with sham group. The primary efficacy endpoint at 24 months was not met, but there was a numeric trend for reduction in geographic atrophy progression at 24 months compared with the sham treatment. Multiple intravitreal administrations of Primo DDS were very well tolerated. However, the study was terminated early because of the lower than expected geographic atrophy progression rate in the enrolled population. Moving on to the second article, which compared the rates of complications in eyes that received a dexamethasone implant 0.7 mg or intravitreal triamcinolone 2 mg to treat post vitrectomy macular edema. A total of 148 eyes were enrolled with 75 eyes in the DEX group and 73 eyes in the IB2 group. The medical records of these patients between July 2014 and December 2021 with a minimum follow-up of three months were reviewed. The ocular hypotony and ocular hypertension were defined as intraocular pressure of less than 6 mm of mercury and more than 24 mm of mercury respectively. The rate of transient ocular hypotony per eye and per injection was significantly higher in the DEX group compared with the IVT group. Mean visual acuity significantly decreased at the time of ocular hypotony, but returned to pre-injection level after resolution of the hypotony after a median of 12 days. The incidence of ocular hypertension was higher in the DEX group than the IVT group, but this was not statistically significant. Ocular hypertension was controlled with observation or topical medication. There were no between-group differences in the incidence of vitreous hemorrhage or retinogenous retinal detachment. Four eyes experienced migration of the DEX implant into the anterior chamber. Coming to the third article, which investigated the association of nascent geographic atrophy preceding the development of exudative type 3 macular neovascularization in patients with age-related macular degeneration. In this retrospective longitudinal study, patients with AMD diagnosed with treatment-naive exudative type 3 MNB in one or both eyes were evaluated. Clinical characteristics and retinal imaging, including structural OCT at baseline and at each follow-up examination, were analyzed. The observed prevalence of the nascent GA preceding exudative type 3 MNB was found to be 22.7 percentage. Exudative type 3 MNB developed a mean of 9 plus or minus 6 months after detection of nascent GA. The presence of reticular pseudodrusin in the study eye did not significantly influence the timing of exudative type 3 MNB development after the observation of nascent GA. Reduced best corrected visual acuity was recorded at the exudative type 3 stage in comparison with the nascent GA stage. Hence, it was concluded that Detection of nascent GA in eyes with AMD may warrant closer surveillance to identify early exudative type 3 MNB warranting treatment. Moving on to the fourth article, which studied the visual and anatomic outcomes of suprachoroidal hemorrhage in a systematic and meta-analysis. Peer-reviewed studies of suprachoroidal hemorrhage published between January 1, 1990 and September 1, 2022 were reviewed and analyzed. 68 studies comprising 1,246 eyes of 1,245 patients were included in the study. 
studies with predominantly non spontaneous supracoroidal hemorrhage and greater percentage of eyes receiving systemic steroids were associated with greater improvement in lobmar visual acuity and a greater proportion of eyes achieving anatomic success studies with greater percentage of eyes treated surgically were associated with greater proportion of eyes with visual acuity improvement of more than or equal to 0.3 lobmar although limited by heterogeneous observational studies published reports of supracoroidal hemorrhage indicate that most eyes with supracoroidal hemorrhage experience some degree of visual acuity improvement and anatomic success however final visual acuity outcomes remain poor with most cases resulting in severe visual impairment or blindness heading towards the last article which assesses the relationship between the distribution of intraretinal hyperreflective foci or ihrf on oct and progression of intermediate age related macular degeneration over 2 years the ihrf were counted in a series of five sequential and fast labs from outer to inner retina the number of ihrf in each slab at baseline and the change in ihrf from baseline to year 2 were correlated with the progression to late amd at 2 years on evaluation 19% of the eyes showed progression to late amd after 2 years the total ihrf count increased from 243 at baseline to 604 at 2 years with a significant increase in the ihrf number in each slab except for the innermost slab 5 which had no ihrf at the baseline or follow up the presence of ihrf in the outermost retinal slabs 1 and 2 was independently associated with a significant risk of progression to late amd thus it was concluded that the risk of progression to late amd is significantly associated with the distribution and extent of ihrf in the outermost retinal layers this observation may point to significant pathophysiologic differences of ihrf in inner versus outer layers of the retina that brings us to the end of the session thank you and see you next month